Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C Sharp and today we're going to be discussing the difference between passing by value and by reference and what was the other thing? Oh yeah, passing functions as parameters. So I'm sorry for the cut in the last video. I was going to be doing the value and ref in there. Then I also thought about I should be showing you functions as parameters as well and there was no way I was going to fit that all in one video and that would be too compact to do that. Okay, so let's... Uh, so this is basically a continuation of the last tutorial. If you didn't watch it, it's all right because we're going to kind of ignore everything that we've done already anyways. So let's create a new button called um, passing. And this will show us the effects, the different effects between passing by value and by reference. So passing. Let's double click this. So now let's um, ignore all the code that's above this. So let's do something like, I don't know, ignore Ignore everything that's on the top. Okay, there we go. So, okay, so now we have our passing click. Now, let's create some functions up here. First, let's create a simple number first. So, double z is, you know, I'll call it an int instead. So, int z is equal to zero. Now, let's check out the difference between passing this guy in as a value and by reference. So, up here, let's create a function called, let's say, well, first of all, private void. So these functions will not be doing anything. So void, let's see here. I'll call it value. And open curly brace, closing curly brace. And passing by value is what we've been doing, just making a copy of the variable. So I could call it um, int num1, something like that. And then I could go num1 plus equals 5. And, well, that should add 5 to it, right? So 0 plus equals 5. So if I call this value function right here, that's what we should expect it to increase by 5. Then after, oh, I got to pass the z in. Then afterwards, let's, uh, do we have a label? Yeah, let's use the label area, just to make it easy. So, you know, I should probably use the message box. I'll be doing it multiple times. Message box dot show and the only thing I'll have print by default is the z dot to string as such okay so it should be printing z right so I click save that's from the last tutorial don't worry so I click passing wait zero wait let's look at this code okay so I hit passing z is equal to zero I created this void value function passed to zero in I added five to it and then I left the function and I wanted to print z but it's still zero well when you uh, pass by value what you're basically is making a copy of that variable and what I mean and I literally mean a copy this is a whole separate variable that's given the value of wherever you pass in you can call this function as many times as you want and this variable right here will always be equal to whatever you pass in but it's still a copy nonetheless once you leave this function that's it. Once you leave this function, that's all you can do. So if I put the message box up here, then we would see that 5. So if I went, so I copied this, and then I pasted it there. I click save. Oh, whoops, that doesn't mean num1. Save. And then, whoops. And then I click passing. We get the 5. Click it again, now it's back to 0. So we could, now, we could make this a, uh, not a void, we could make it like a double, or an, we could make this an int, have it return num plus equals 5, and then set that equal to a variable down here, and then um, print that. But what you could do instead is if you want to make any permanent changes, you can pass it by reference instead. And how you do that is, well, let me just copy and paste this since it will be pretty much just the same. So this will be our reference. Can't have two of the same though. So I call it reference. And in order to pass by reference in front of the data type, type R, E, F, and space. So now it's going to pass it by reference. Okay, so now we have message box dot show. Now let's call the reference and we'll put Z back right in there. And Let's throw this in there. Copy, paste. Oh, whoops. 
There we go. You have to type your REF is there as well. Sorry about that. So you have reference, reference. So let's see how this works. I click passing. We get our zero because we went into the value. It passed it by value, which is normal. But then when it left the function into this message box that show, none of those changes were saved. But when you pass by a reference, what's happening is it's referencing the address of this variable. It's actually linking these two together. So any changes you make to it, it's actually making the changes to that address. So whatever the values that are changed will become permanent. So if I press OK, now we get 5. So we didn't have to return anything. We could have just passed by reference. OK. So also note that passing by reference can also help you from having to actually return values. However, there will be situations in which you will have to do that as well. Okay, so what's the next thing I'd like to show you? Probably passing a function within a function. So I could probably just get rid of all of this. So I'll get rid of both of these, passing by val and passing by reference. And let's get into the actual passing a function within a function. So what's a good example I could do? Um okay I'll have it I'll just have it print a message or something so I'll have a private void and I'll call it I don't know mountain yeah I'm really making this up and hmm what should I do 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 I do not know what to do let's have it return a value shall we let's make it a double instead let's make it a now let's make it an int, int mountain. Let's create a variable called int height. And let's say the height is, I don't know, 10,000 something, whatever value you'd like to give it. And then it's got to return that height. So that's all it does. That's all it does. So there you go. Now we have an int called mountain, and it creates this variable called height, and it returns that height. So we could always pass in a parameter, but I'm just going to show you an easy example. So we could pass in a parameter, um, but nah, nah. So let's get rid of all of this, and let's create a normal kind of calculate. So let's, I could probably explain this when I actually make it, because I didn't make any notes for this at all. Let's call it private double, and, oh, I didn't give it a name calculates activity I don't know and so the first thing we'll pass in is that int from the mountain so int I don't know new height whatever you'd like to call it and what else do we want to throw in there let's call it a string name let's pass in our name in there as well so this is going to be a bit of a complicated guy that we'll be making here so opening curly brace closing there we go so you have calculate activity so we can actually make this a void we don't we don't need this to we don't need this to return a value so this is void and let's throw in whatever so let's say we type our name right here so text width so you go string name be equal to text width dot text I know now I know my example here is becoming really random. Okay, so we made a so whatever our name is, we type in our name into the width text box, and maybe we want to pass that into this calculate activity. So we could type in calculate activity as such. Then the first thing we need to pass in is uh, whatever height we get here. So that's going to be kind of interesting. So first we're going to have to type in the name of that function, mountain as such comma and then our name like that so then I can throw in a semicolon and there you go now it all works so see how we're passing in the mountain as a parameter well notice how the parameter for calculate activity has to be an integer so the integer so that an integer must be returned this must return something this can't be a pass by this can't be a void this has to be returning some kind of value so it's going to return a height which is an integer out of this mountain. So let's actually make this a little bit more complicated. So we have this as 10,000. 
You know what? Let's not make this 10,000. Let's actually allow us to uh, choose what goes in there using the length. Why not? So we could make a length int. Uh, I don't know. Is it is it new height? Is that why I should put? No, I already put new height. Let's put down int uh, just height again, I guess, and set that equal to convert dot to double. And I think I have enough time. I can explain all of this once I finish it, so don't worry. Um, I'm really making up what I'm doing here. It makes no sense at all. So convert dot to double, and whatever we typed into the our length box dot text. Okay, so we're going to type in a height here. Convert dot to double. Is that supposed to be working? Oh, I want to go to int. Sorry about that. So to int. There you go. That should work. Because it's going to be an int. So we're going to type in our integer up here and then our name here. So it's kind of weird. I'm sorry about that. I didn't prepare this. So that's going to be our height and our name. So, calculate activity. We want to pass in the height into our mountain, so we're going to need a parameter there. So we'll call that int, uh, we'll just call it int height. Since we're calling it height right here, make sure it's still called height. And then we're going to pass in our height right there. They do not need to be the same name, but I'm already using new height right here, so. Okay, so we're going to pass in whatever we did here. And all it's going to do is return it, so it's kind of pointless. Actually, let's re let's be a little bit more complicated. Return height times two. Let's be cool about this. And so it actually does something. So this will now be equal. This whole function right here inside this parameter will now be equal to whatever was passed in times two. And then we're just going to take in the name. So now we need that calculate activity to actually do something. If I don't know if. Uh, what should we put in there? New heights is greater than 1,000. Then, and then else, we'll just have something weird come up. Uh, label output or label area dot text will be equal to. That's a high point. Did I spell that all right? Oh, whoops. That's a high point. I'm terrible at typing right now. I guess it's a late. And an else will be label area dot text is equal to uh, not so much. Okay, so basically when we click the pa um, our passing button now, it's going to take in whatever we typed in the length text box which I guess we'll just make it a height of a mountain, I guess. And whatever, and whatever you type in the width box uh, will be our name. So that's going to be a string and an integer. And then we'll have the calculate area or a calculate activity be called. So it's going to pass in two parameters, this and this. So at first it's going to go into the mountain function, passing in the height. So it's going to go to the mountain, passing in the height as a parameter. And it's going to return that height times two. Then it's also going to pass in our name, whatever we typed in. So now it's going to go into our calculate activity, passing in the new height and string name. So the int and string, still the same. And then it's going to check to see if the height is um, after being multiplied by 2, if it's greater than 1,000 or not. And that will determine what happens. So, oops, there we go. Um, okay, so the length, so the length is going to be, what is that? The height. So let's put in 600. And let's put in our name here. So I'll type in, uh, I'll type in, Aaron, and I'll click passing. That's a high point. That's because 600, when it was multiplied by two in this function up here, it got it became 1200. So this whole thing right here became 1200 instead of just the 600 that we typed in. So when it went into this thing, it checked to see if it was greater than a thousand, which it was. So if we go 400, which is times two. Uh, probably won't work so much. Not so much, see? And actually, allow me to let it print my name really quickly. So, plus name. There we go. 
that should work save and let me show that to you really quickly so I'll probably need to make this a little longer so if I run this application let's see if my name pops up as well so I'll go 400 and Adam I click passing and there's Adam so you can do that as well so I hope this tutorial was helpful for you kinda of confusing watch it again and again if you need to because eventually it will make sense so I'll see you next time